What's up, guys? Today on Sports Spectrum, we get to go to the continent of Africa. Well, actually, we're going to Detroit, Michigan. But Elvis Amo, who is a pro soccer player with Detroit FC in the USL in America playing professional soccer. He's from Ghana. And man, does this man love Jesus. And we get to talk to Elvis about growing up in Ghana, about soccer slash football, as it's called over there being the main thing in his life and the shift that took place a few years back where he understood that God needed to be the priority in his life, not soccer. And yet he's still a pro soccer player today. And we get to catch up with Elvis Amo and talk about his journey with Jesus. He also is the founder of an Instagram page called Footballers for Christ. So I wanted to ask him about ministry and using his platform to glorify God in the world of professional soccer. Elvis Amo is coming up in just a moment here on Sports Spectrum. Can't wait for you to hear this conversation. I also can't wait for you to check out our brand new Sports Spectrum magazine that has been out actually for a few weeks now. It's our summer 2024 edition, and you can subscribe right now over at sportspectrum.com. Faith-filled, family-friendly, clean sports content, devotionals, Wonderful design, great pictures, and features Sydney McLaughlin Lavroni on the cover. Two time Olympic gold medalist going for gold medal number three and maybe more in Paris in a few weeks. You can subscribe right now to the Sports Spectrum magazine by going to sportspectrum.com. When you check out, subscribe to a one year edition. We want to give you a bonus 15% off a one year subscription. It's already $24 for the entire year, super affordable. But here's a code for you, podcast15, podcast15, when you check out, and you'll save an additional 15% off a one-year subscription. You can subscribe today right now over at the website, sportsspectrum.com. is Elvis Amo. Elvis, welcome to Sports Spectrum. It's good to see you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here. Yes, sir. This has been a long time coming. We met, I think it was last year. I got to come out and see you play some uh, some soccer in Hartford, Connecticut, near where I live here in uh, Central Connecticut. And now you're over in Detroit, but you're still doing the soccer thing, which is great. We're going to talk about your love for soccer. We're going to talk about your love for football, as it's known where you're from, in a minute. But I want to start with where we should always start, and that's with your faith in Jesus. Tell me about who Jesus Christ is in the life of Elvis Amo. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, um, Jesus Christ... Uh, in my life, I would say he is my life. Um, that is the first thing I will say. Um, I remember back back when I was beginning my career, um, I used to say football is my life because I loved it. I loved it so much, and I was very passionate about the game. And um, as I grew and had encounters and began to understand, you know, my faith really well, it turned out to be that Jesus is actually my life and not football. So I would say Jesus is my life. When did that shift take place? When did football, soccer for the Americans, when did football go from being first place in Elvis's life to somewhere below where Jesus was for Elvis? Um, I will say, you know, in the beginning, like I said, beginning my career, um, somewhere around 2016, 15, when I really signed my first pro contract in Ghana back home, um, after signing the contract, I think playing the game and combining it with my faith, you know, I used to always put, you know, football first above my faith. Not in terms that I, I recommend, I like, I, I recognized that soccer was bigger than God for me. But then as I was playing the game, I began to understand that it doesn't fulfill me in all aspects of my life than what Christ does for me. Um, in my life. And so that was when the turnaround, you know, began to happen when I, I began to seek God more for, for who he is and not what he was going to give me in my career. So I would say somewhere around 2015, 16 there about. Do you remember your first encounter with Christ growing up? 
Um, yes, I could say I remember. I've had a few. I've had a few um, recent times. Uh, but growing up, I, I had a few encounters that were, you know, a little bit uh, mind blowing to me. I remember a few. Yeah, please elaborate. Can you elaborate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can. I can share a few. And so uh, I remember there was this time that I was really sick. Um, I was very sick because I was playing in the Colts football in Ghana. We call it Colts football, so I couldn't go and play that Saturday game. So I was just home, shivering, you know, a massive fever. And then whilst I was just sitting down, I just decided to pray for myself because normally people like, you know, you go to somebody to pray for me that I get healed. But then I laid my hands on myself and prayed to Jesus, and then all of a sudden I just felt great like i felt like nothing was going on in me i felt like the fever just disappeared so that was the first you know encounter that i had i was like no nah, this this is something this is not normal hmm. i love that story I, and i love that it happened in a, in a moment of healing for yourself i mean it's it's one thing to go to church and you see people maybe praising and raising their hands and clapping and and praising Jesus, but it's another one when you experience it personally from a healing touch from God. Now you said it still was a struggle to, to not that you didn't believe in God, but that God wasn't first place, right? Like that your, your, your football career was all you cared about. But when did you realize that football slash soccer could be a great platform to use to spread the gospel and to share about Jesus with others? Yeah, so once, I think this is somewhere around 2016, 2017, when I was really transitioning from, you know, you know, seeking God more. And in, in doing that, um, it was always something in me. I knew that I had the talent to play soccer, for sure. But then there was always something in me to push it onto others, letting them know that, hey, this is what God is doing in my life with soccer. And so I began to, you know, hear that voice of kind of being an inspiration to the young people that were also trying to, you know, make it to pro and stuff like that. That Hey, I know you want to play soccer, but if you seek God first, you know, he will help you in that process where even though you are doing this, you know, earthly, you know, work or this worldly game, you are not doing it for the, for the fun of it, but you are doing it to glorify God. And so between around 2016, 2017, that was when I began to transition that football is a really big platform that I can use, you know, to glorify the name of the Lord. And what happened? What changed after you started recognizing that? Uh, a lot of things changed. <laughs> <laughs> a, a lot of things changed. Um, once, you know, I began to see God more, um, to use football as a platform um, um, to glorify the name of the Lord, I think... The way I approached the game change and the way um, I had to deal with setbacks changed. Mm. I saw it, you know, from different perspectives, like injuries, um, going to trial and not being picked, um, being, you know, being without a club and all those moments in my life. I was able to deal with that because of the transition I had in putting, you know, God first in my life. Elvis Amo is our guest here on Sports Spectrum. He's with Detroit City FC in the USL as a professional soccer slash football player. Tell me about um, growing up in Ghana, and that's in West Africa, correct? Yes, yes. Yeah, tell us about Africa. that. Well, yeah, growing up in Ghana was, you know, a very, I would say, very loving moment for me. I enjoyed every part, you know, of of my life that I lived in Ghana. Originally, I was born in um, Italy, my parents, and then re they relocated to Ghana. So I would say I lived most of my life in, in Ghana. But I would say it's, it's a very free country, um, very peaceful. Um, of course, there are things that could be very corrected, but I would say for the most part, um, I enjoyed, you know, um, living in Ghana. Is God... Jesus Christ, a, a prominent thing as far as faith goes in Ghana that you saw, or was it was it not quite that prominent? It is very prominent, I would yeah. say, um, because from where I lived 
you know, and then of course there are other, you know, religions and all that. But I would say that Christianity is very dominant and prominent back home in Ghana. So that's where you kind of were rooted, I guess, in your faith was going to church. Was that fair to say? Yeah, yeah, because my parents will, you know, take us to church on Sunday. I lived more with my grandmother, so she would take us to church every Sunday, um, tell us about God and all that. But then even up to that moment, I had not really, you know, encountered God for myself, even though I would just go to church Sunday school and all that. Um, but yeah, I was rooted. I've come from a, a, you know, a Christian, you know, family. So when did you realize football was a sport that you were pretty good at? Was that something you, you recognized when you were little or is that something that, cause I'm guessing that's the dominant sport in Ghana as well, right? Football. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. When did you realize you, you had a, a pretty good gift here that the Lord had given you? Yeah, I think, um, when I was around like six, seven years old. Because, you know, in Ghana, it's normal for us to be playing soccer outside. Every kid, you know, will play soccer. From that age, we will just play in front of the house, you know, with your friends. Nothing structured. We are just playing to have fun. Um, so I would say I began playing soccer around the age six, seven years old. But realizing that I could, you know, do it professionally was when I was about um going into you know like primary school junior high school and high school which was about like 11 12 years old maybe that was when i really realized that hey i could make you know a good career of this talent god has given me so when how does that work would you go to school during the day and then right after school you know go play some soccer go play some football and and, and hone your skills and then go home at night and finish your homework is that kind of what it was like <laughs> It's, it's definitely like that. You know, there are times where you just want to play with your friends, but then mostly when you go to school, there's a school team, especially when you're like in primary school, um, going to, you know, junior high school, there's a school team where like you join practice at school on Fridays, but then there are also like academies back home, like coast football, where when you come back from school, you have to go there and go train, which is more structured um, um, in, a, in an academy form. So that is how it works. You go to school, play around a little bit, come home, go to coach football academy, play, and then, you know, come back home in the evening, you know, do your homework. But sometimes, you know, your parents would be like, no, don't go anywhere, stay home. But then yeah. because you're so passionate about it, you find a way, you know, to go play soccer and come back home. Totally. Do you remember your first trip to the United States? Yeah, I do. Where did you go? <laughs> Straight to uh, D.C. D.C.? Uh, D.C. Okay. United. Um, sorry, um, D.C., Maryland, Virginia. So I went to Virginia. That was my first trip. Was it kind of eye-opening when you came to this? Like, what was that? Exp I always wonder what that experience is like from someone who lived in Africa their whole life, and then suddenly they're they're in this this different place, yeah. the United States and the West. Yeah, it was... It is like you said, it's an eye opening because you always see these things, you know, on social media, on the internet, on TV, and happen happening to be, you know, in that same, you know, instance or in that same experience. It's, it was very different. It was very different, and it was like a little bit refreshing. Okay, I see this on TV now. I'm here. You know, it was it was really nice. It was a good experience for my first trip. One of the questions I wanted to ask you was, what have you seen as someone from West Africa about how Christianity and faith are here in the U.S. as compared to in Africa? What's the difference? Um, I wouldn't say there's so much difference. Maybe, you know, cultural ways, you know, um, cultural wise, you know, how Ghanaians or Africans will probably do their praise will not be the same as how the states will do their praise, you know, to God, which is the same, is the same foundation, is the same experience, but I would say culturally, that is where the boundary is. But I don't think it's even a problem. So those are the differences. And how, you know, back home in Africa, how we worship intensively, you know, how we dance, we sing, and it's, it's just different culturally. That is what I think. But technically, the foundations and everything is, is the same. So where, when you're in the off season as a, as a soccer player now, where do you, do you go home to Ghana? Like, where do you live um, year round? Obviously you're in the middle of a season right now in Detroit, but where do you live? So, I mean, 
usually like the the season in the United States starts from uh, March, you know, somewhere to November. So usually I go home in December. I go I go to Ghana in December for the most part. But sometimes to you know I stay here in the off season, you know, with the family and stuff like that. So yeah. Nice. Yeah, I was always curious about that because when you're from, uh, you know, that's far away. Let's just put it that way. So you can't just hop in your hop in your car and drive back to Ghana when the season's over and you're home, you know, in a couple hours. It's different for you. Um, so I, I was wondering about that because I think, like you mentioned, there's a cultural shift that takes place when you come here um, versus, you know, growing up in Ghana where you were. I want to talk about footballers for Christ because that was a big shift for you, I think, as you talked about, you know, using your platform and understanding that God had given you this, this gift of being a soccer player to be able to then glorify God and point people to Christ in the midst of playing soccer. And so you came up, I believe, created Footballers for Christ on Instagram, which is a great follow, especially those who love Jesus in the world of soccer and football. Why did you start Footballer Footballers for Christ? Yeah. Um. I would say it's it's something that had always been in me. Um, right when I transitioned, like I said, putting God first in everything that I was doing, I had that you know, you know, something in me that wanted me to you know create something in the avenue of soccer, you know, to promote the gospel. Um, but this is how it started. Um, in our in 2020, in 2020, when COVID was, you know big and everybody was stuck home and and stuff like that yeah. uh, it was really difficult you know for us to worship you know and i had this friend who was also back home in ghana he's called patrick at that time he was playing somewhere in europe somewhere like that so i i had that in me so i just connected with him and he's like hey it's COVID season everybody's at home this is the time that prayer is really needed because it was very terrible and so between me and him, we, we created something called, uh, like you said, Football is for Christ, where we just fellowship. In the beginning, that is what it was all about, you know, fellowship. And so we did it, you know, on Facebook sometimes and on Zoom sometimes just to fellowship with one another. And then the initiative just kept coming and coming and coming. So we had other group of guys, you know, wanting to join in, other pros from all, all over the world wanting to join in in that, you know, prayer every 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 week and one inspirational you know page that was also instrument instrumental in in creating a footballers for christ is a uh, bonus in god um i had was i was following their um their leader for a while now and i loved how he was inspiring people with you know with his game and stuff like that and not just him you could see kaka and all these guys you know using their page to glorify god so there was more of an inspiration from all these guys that you know led me into you know making that step of creating footballers for christ yeah and it sounds like it, the reception's been really good it's growing and you're getting a lot of guys together and it's not just an instagram page like you said it was created to kind of formulate prayer on zoom do you guys still have those opportunities for people to join in and spend some time in prayer together yeah yeah we do we we meet you know once every week to just fellowship with each other and you know football is um it's a very you know difficult sport um mentally physically emotionally so we we, we join together every um day to just talk about things that we are all used to because we are all in that same environment um and then we just encourage ourselves using the word of god and pray together so it's yeah. just it keeps going every time yeah, I love that. Um, so besides that, we're in the middle of a season right now as we talk. What does time with God for you look like? Like waking up, prayer, Bible study, chapel, if there's that. Anything, c can you share with us kind of what the routine is and the time spent with the Lord for, for Elvis right now as we're in the middle of a season? Uh, yeah, usually it's pretty... I would say it's not difficult too much. It's just very simple. I just wake up in the morning. Um, I say a prayer. I thank God for life. And, uh, you know, because we train early, so uh, go to training, you know, 
sometimes when I'm not doing anything, just try to read something at training. But then after training, um, I have a lot of Bible studies that I, I join. Sometimes, you know, on Tuesdays, on Wednesdays, it's, it's packed during the week. So from church wise and on Sundays, um, if I find a church that, you know, I like in that area, I go there on Sundays when we are off. So it's not a crazy routine, but it's always trying to squeeze in, you know, um, God in the schedule. <laughs> well, you know what? I shouldn't have said routine either, because that's probably <laughs> not a good word to use. But I really just meant what's a what's a what's a consistent time with God look like? And it sounds like you just shared that. That's got to be really hard to find a church. Last year, you're in Hartford. You know, you were in Colorado Springs and Rio Grande Valley. Now you're in Detroit. That's got to be pretty hard to find a church, um, a, a stable church that you can attend, especially in the fact that when yeah. you're on the road, you have a lot of games to play on Saturday nights. So it's hard yeah. to get up and, and if you're traveling to even go to church on Sunday. But you've been able to do that a little bit? Yeah, everywhere that I've gone, I've, God has made a way for me all the time to find like a Bible believing church that I believe in church to go to. So all these, you know, places that you mentioned, I'm sure they probably, they know that, you know, Elvis came to our church. So that's <laughs> wherever I've been, I've been able, God has been able to bless me to find like a good Bible believing church to go. And it's always a sad moment when I have to leave it. So. Yeah, I yeah. bet. Well, that's the thing about being a professional athlete, too, is so much of it is, I mean, it's all temporary when you look at the kingdom of God, but so much of it is temporary because you got eight months. Maybe next year you'll be back in Detroit. Maybe you'll get elevated. Maybe you go somewhere else. Who knows what's going to happen? But you know, it's like right now I'm in Detroit. Let me find a church here and then we'll worry about tomorrow or even next year when that comes. Yeah. Yeah. This is. It's tough, but you know it's part of the game. It's part of the job. So, um, getting used to it day by day. Did your parents name you after Elvis Presley? Were they fan? Like, where does the name Elvis come from? I'm curious. Uh, yeah, because my parents, I think, when you know, in those days, I think they named all of my siblings with people that were like popular. Oh. So, so what are your so siblings' names? So one is Murphy. <laughs> Like Eddie Murphy? <laughs> yeah, one is Dolly. Dolly? Okay. Yeah, this is fascinating. Is, What's yeah, the other one? one is Kevin, you know, you know, Matilda. So my parents, that is what they did. Actually. Wow. Yeah. How was that received in Africa? I'm I'm I don't know African culture, but I'm guessing those aren't natural African names, right? <laughs> yeah, they are not. But the good thing is they, you know, they have those names, but then they give us like our native, you know, African names in addition to it. So like for me, my name is Techi Amo, Elvis Techi Amo, which Techi. Um, Techi T A K Y I. Techi. Okay. okay. I got it. Yeah. yeah. So so all my other siblings have like native, you know, um African cultural names. Right. But Elvis is cool too. Like do you even have an do you have Elvis, you know, a memorabilia or anything like that? Like, are you, do you even like Elvis Presley's music? <laughs> I'm still yet to do a little, you know, research. A little about, research? I mean, I have a few, I, I know he was a singer. Yes. And I know he started from the church, but I'm still yet to go deeper into, into who he really was. But. Yeah. There was a movie that came out a couple of years ago on his life that you could probably just watch and get a good reflection of that. But he was, he was big time. I'll just say that in the United States. So your name, you know, there's not a lot of other Elvises out there. It's Elvis Presley and Elvis Amu. There you go. Um, I like maybe. that. Maybe, maybe. Well, listen, um, as we wind down, I just want to ask you this question kind of to close. Um, when you're in time with in prayer with God, like what is your prayer to God today? Like if you could just say, okay, Elvis, Time to pray for, pray to God. And obviously giving thanks is important, but like, what's your prayer right now? What's been on your heart with God? Um, lately, um, when I go into prayer, uh, one of my, you know, my, my topmost things that I, I always ask God is that, that I do not derive away from his will for my life. Yeah. Because I think that is what shapes me and, it affects my daily, you know, decisions. 
Um, so that is one prayer that I always pray that, Father, Lord, help me that I may not derive away from your will for my life, what you have purposed for me to do. So that is one prayer that I always pray. That's beautiful. I, I tell people, when you pray, your will be done, God. You know, Jesus is in the garden, right? And he's sweating drops of blood. And what does he say? He's like, take this cup away from me. And then he says, not my will, but yours be done. I tell people all the time, that is the most dangerous prayer to pray. Here's why. Because it takes all control out of your hands, right? But yet, but yet you pray that every day. Yeah. And funny enough, when you, when you, you know, in Footballers for Christ, um, our slogan is God's will and nothing more. Mm. So it's, yeah. it's, it's something that has always been part of me. And I've, I've learned it the hard way that his will is not always pleasant with me. Uh, because yeah. there's been times where um, I ask questions like, why is this happening? Why am I injured? I thought this year was going to be a great year. Um, I got this prophecy. I think I had this dream that the year was going to be great. Why am I out after three games? Why am I out after five games? Why am I not scoring? So there's always so much questions, but then it boils down to like what you just said, you know, not mine will, but you know, your will be done. So maybe that is his will for my life, but then it doesn't push me away from working hard or continually seeking his face to do great things. I always have that final, you know, slot that it always lands me into that hey his will is always the best you know for you yeah it's it takes the pressure off too by the way because if we think we can do all this and control all this and have all this amazingly awesome gifts to be able to that's when our ego is getting the way and ego is easing god out i've heard and when you think about that it's true when you say not my will but yours be done now you're playing freely you're living freely to know that God's plan is perfect. So I love what you're doing. By the way, I forgot to tell people, you mentioned that cold weather when you were being healed when you were seven. Earlier this year, the very first game, I believe, right, was in Colorado. Tell the story because they had just gotten like a blizzard. And actually, my boss, Howard, got to go watch you play. I didn't know this until after we spoke, but you were playing in freezing cold Colorado in March Knowing that we're talking now well into the season where it's warmer, it's probably so much better. But what was that like? What is it like to play? Because you guys even had to dig out a little bit just to have room to prepare and practice, right? Yeah, it was it was it was a it was a wild you know um, game um, on that day because it was our first game of the season. Yeah, and you know Colorado is known for being very cold and. That weekend, it snowed the whole time. So we're like, is this game even going to come on? But then we had to shovel out some, some some part of the snow. I think, you know, the, the fans helped in doing that. But it was very cold. But you <laughs> scored was, a goal in the game, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was a good one for me. It was a good start. I thank God for that, but it was really cold. Yeah, it was being a good from, experience. Yeah. Yeah, but being from Ghana, you're not you're not into this cold thing, I would imagine. You want it to be warm and, and yes. sunny and eighty degrees if it can, if it can be that. <laughs> yes, yes. If it could be that all year, that would be nice. But I that is not the case. But that is not the case. Over the years I've been I'm not used to it. I always get it gets me all the time, but um it's part of the game, it's part of the job, so we have to well, deal with it. <laughs> thank God it's warmed up now and that's a good yeah. thing. So yeah. Elvis, this was phenomenal. So glad we got to connect. I want people to go make sure they're following um, Footballers for Christ on Instagram and, and follow, follow Elvis as well and, and kind of watch his journey as a soccer player. And uh, keep doing what you're doing, buddy. I really appreciate you coming on the show and love that we're doing kingdom work together, my friend. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Um, Jason, like I said, you've been a, a great mentor for you know young people you know, who wants to follow Christ. So God bless you for what you do um, in the kingdom. And it's a pleasure to be here. So it was a pleasure to be here as well. Thank you, buddy. And many thanks to Elvis for being our guest today on Sports Spectrum. Elvis Amo, check out Detroit FC in the USL in professional soccer in the United States. They play all over the country. I got to watch Elvis play last year when he was in Hartford in Hartford, Connecticut, here where I live, in Central Connecticut. And it was my first professional soccer 
match that I got to see, and it was phenomenal. I had such a great time. The fans were were jam packed. It was right around this time in the summer, and uh, loved watching Elvis play. Loved watching soccer, and I got to get back up to Hartford and see see a match again. But loved watching him. And if you were anywhere near where Detroit FC is going to be playing this year, go watch Elvis. Maybe even shout out his name or shout out a little Jesus is Lord. I bet you he'll turn around and give you a wink or a nod or a little wave. Elvis Amo, great guy. Appreciate him sharing his story today. Really appreciate it on Sports Spectrum. We thank you for tuning in to today's show. You can check out our website, sportspectrum.com, for all of our content. Got some exciting things happening on the horizon here with Sports Spectrum. Can't wait to tell you more all about it soon. I mean, very soon. Like it might even be tomorrow. That's how soon this might be, and I'm really excited for you to hear and see what's going to be happening with Sports Spectrum's website and a brand new Sports Spectrum app. Stay tuned for more. It'll be on our social feeds as well, so make sure you're following us on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and YouTube, all of the channels, all of the socials, if you will, and we just appreciate you guys tuning in. Also, whatever app you're listening to this podcast on, make sure you click subscribe, or the follow button, that way you don't miss any more episodes of Sports Spectrum. And then lastly, just tell someone. If you want to let someone know about this episode with Elvis, or an article or a devotional that's on our website, man, telling others about Sports Spectrum is the best way that we can collaborate together to share the gospel with the world. That's what this is about, using sports as a way to share the gospel of Jesus and the hope that's found only in Christ with the world. So we love you guys. We thank you so much for your investment with Sports Spectrum and tuning into today's show. We will see you next time right here on Sports Spectrum. Have a great rest of your day. Hey, thanks for watching Sports Spectrum here on YouTube. You can click our next video or you can check out our website, sportspectrum.com.